In this video, we're going to show you a few things uh, concerning webbing. Uh, webbing is a common tool used for firefighters in the fire service. Uh, it looks just like this, an inch wide. And uh, we're going to go over a few things on uh, uh, the types of webbing and some storage methods. Uh, we're going to go over a few knots that we can use with webbing and then some practical applications for it. Uh, webbing can be used for all sorts of things. It's a great handy tool to have on you. Uh, it can be used for rescue. Uh, it can be used to hoist tools, uh, hold hose, secure anything. It's just easy to have in your pocket and it's a little bit easier to carry around than having a bag of rope with you. So in the times where you need, um, you know, quick access to rope and you don't have it on you, webbing is perfect for that. Um, it's pretty versatile. You can do a lot of things with it. So today we're going to show you, we're going to start off uh, by describing the two different types of webbing that's available and mo more common in the fire service. And to start off with, we have this, and this is tubular webbing. And for the you know straight reason that it is tubular, and even though the end of this is sealed, if we were to unseal that or cut it off, it just makes a perfect tube. Um, and this is rated for about 4,000 pounds. And if you look at it, we have directional guides right here. It's a dotted line in the middle of it. And on the back side, it's blank. And that'll come in handy later when we show you how to do a few knots and a few uses for it. So keep that in mind. The second type of webbing that we have here is just flat webbing. And it is just basically the same material. It's just flat. At the end, it's not a tube. It's just one-sided, flat, one inch wide. And it just does the same thing. And the knots and the uses that we'll be going over today uh, applicable for both types of webbing. Uh, it's just kind of a preference thing or what's available in your fire department. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about um, some storage ideas uh, when you're carrying it on your person. Um, a lot of guys, you know, this is a great way to have it. Just simple rolled up. It's flat. fits right in the pocket. It will stay the way it is. Easy to deploy. And uh, nothing wrong with this idea. I Personally, don't carry this this uh, this method. I'm carrying the next method that we'll talk about, which is it's already tied into a loop with a water knot, and then we store it with a daisy chain. And obviously, this isn't very long, so we don't have too many chains in our daisy chain. But um, the longer the longer the uh, the webbing is, the longer our chain is. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to um, tie this daisy chain and tie the water knot. So this is where our first two knots are gonna come into play. So what we'll do is we're gonna use this tubular webbing. This is about 12 foot, uh, just about just as long as this. Um, one of the benefits to having it tied like this is it's easy to deploy. And when you do get it deployed, you have a, just a big loop, a 12 foot loop of webbing that you can use to um, Secure a uh, hose line, use for rescue, get it around a victim, drag them out. Uh, it's already tied up. So you, it, instead of this way where you just unroll it and then have to tie your water knot, this is already done for you and it's easy to deploy. So that's kind of a benefit to doing it. So what we'll do is we'll start off and we'll show you how to do this. So we're just going to go ahead and unroll this. And we're going to just make sure that it's flat, no bends, no turns in the rope. And so we're going to start with one end, and what we're going to do is just an overhand knot. And we're going to leave a little at the end of our knot, about five inches of what we're looking for. So remember the directional arrows that we talked about earlier. We want to make sure that before the knot, we're blank. After the knot, we're blank. That way we know there's no bends in our knot. Okay? So just an overhand knot, just like that. That's on one end. Okay? Now we're going to follow the rest of our webbing to make sure there's no turns in it. Make sure it's flat, not bent, not twisted. And what we're going to do is we are going to um, follow our water knot or our overhand knot. And we're just going to go right through. Go through. Go around. Back over. And through it again. And remember we want to make sure we have enough at the end to give us about five inches of play here and we want to make sure that you see 
blank, blank. And on the other side, dotted, dotted. That means that there's no twists, no kinks in your, in your knot, and you just have a straight, not like that. And when you have that completed, that's a water knot. And we're going to pull that tight, make sure it's secure, make sure it's locked in place there. And again, we're going to go through our loop now that we've created, because this is just one big loop now. And we're going to go through, and we're going to make sure that it's flat. No twists, no nothing. It's just one flat piece of webbing. And so after we've done that, now we're going to start our daisy chain. So this is what we're going to have when it is deployed. It's just a big loop. We can fit it around a victim, drag them out. You know, we can secure a door. We can put it around hose, haul the hose. This is a great uh, utensil to have when you're in a fire or in you know, any emergency situation. So now to do the daisy chain. So we're restoring it, okay? What we can do is bring the end of our loop to our water knot that we just made, okay? And with that, we'll put it right below the water knot. So we're going to have just like that. So now you should have four layers, okay, of your webbing right below your water knot, just like that, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're just going to come up and we're going to do another overhand knot right below our water knot, okay? Instead of following all the way through, we're going to make a bite at the end of it and just shove through or not. And we're going to make a little bite. Looks like that. So instead of pulling the whole loop through the knot, we're just making a bite. Okay? And then we're going to make sure that that's tight. The tighter this is, the better it will work out in the end. So now that you have that, you're going to continue on and just shove another part of your webbing through it. And you keep doing this until you've gotten the entire length of your webbing done and you have about five inches left, which is what we have here. So once you have five inches left, you're going to go through your last loop that you made and you're going to run it through. Instead of shoving half of it and making a bite, you're going to pull it all the way through. That's going to keep it from coming undone. So you can see we have our chain started and then we have this all the way through and tightened so that it can't come undone. So obviously on a longer piece of webbing, your chain will be longer. You'll have more bites. And in the end, you'll have this loop pull through and it won't come undone. Um, just to save time, we're using a shorter piece of webbing here. So when you have that done, a good idea to do is have a carabiner clip on the end of it. And we're going to go back up to the top of our water knot where that little hole is. That's where we're going to clip our carabiner. So now that's the top of our water knot. This is our bottom, and this is how we're going to store it. So when we do go to deploy this knot, now this one will show you how easy it is to uh, deploy. We'll take our carabiner clip off. We'll go to the end, and we'll just pull that end out. Now we have our chain, but with the chain, all you got to do, just pull it. comes undone. The chain falls apart, and now you're left with your original loop that you have with the water knot holding it. So that's how you make your daisy chain and that is great for storing. So that's how you make your daisy chain, that's how you deploy it, that's a good use. Now we're going to show you a couple other knots other than the ones that we've covered for other practical uses. One of the uh, the knots that we like to use here with the webbing is uh, it's called a handcuff knot. It's another rescue knot that we can use quick on our feet and uh, it's made to literally go around the hands or the feet of a victim and you can pull them and drag them out that way. Now, one of the cons to having your webbing set up in the daisy chain is that when you deploy it, you have a loop. Now, when you want to go and make a handcuff knot or let's say hoist a tool, like we'll show later, you have to untie your water knot and it takes just a little bit of time, which is why this, your regular roll, is, is a better idea to have if you're going to make a knot or hoist a tool. Preferably, I carry both. I carry one roll of flat rolled like this in my pocket, and I have a daisy chain. So I know when I grab this, I'm grabbing for rescue, to pull someone out, or to grab to haul a hose line. With the flat roll, pretty easy. Just throw it, 
comes unrolled. Now you have just a big line of webbing. So to make a handcuff knot, here's what we're going to do. Take it like this, palm up, palm down, roll your hands naturally. So you're going to make that kind of loop right here. Okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to make that pretzel look, and you're going to pull both of these from the center. Okay? Let me show you again. Right here. This one goes to the front. This one goes to the back. And then you have this knot right here, and it comes tight. So now you have two loops right here that can go through the hands of a victim or the feet of a victim. Right like that. That's your handcuff. And then the strings right here, you pull them tight, and it won't come undone. And then you can use this end of the rope to drag them out. That's a good uh, good knot for rescue. Um, hands or feet works either way. If you have the rolled method that I showed you earlier, it's pretty easy to get out. But if you're doing the daisy chain, the only step you have to take further is to untie your water knot, which sometimes if you tie it tight, it can be kind of a pain, especially if you're wearing gloves. So I, I would suggest carrying one of each. Carry a 12-foot section with a daisy chain and then carry a 12-foot section just pre-rolled. And that way, whatever application you need to use, it's already there for you. So now we're going to go on to the next knot. We've covered the water knot and the daisy chain, and then I just showed you the handcuff knot. And we'll go back through one more time just to explain each one and some methods and some uh, scenarios that you would use them. And we'll retie them and make sure that everybody understands and sees how to do it clearly. But before we do that, we're going to go over one more knot, and that is called the clove hitch knot. And this is a good knot to know when you're going to hoist a tool. And a common tool that we hoist right here is your axe. And so I'm going to show you in a situation where you don't have rope or access to rope immediately and you need to get a tool. Let's say you're on a balcony and you need to get an axe right up above you or below you and you need to hand it down. And it's just not quite far enough to where you can reach down and hand it to somebody. You can just hoist it down or up. So we're going to show you a good knot to use and a safe way to use it. So you take your the webbing that you have, okay? This is a 12 foot section, and we're going to take at the end a clove hitch, which is one loop, two loops, just like that, and we're going to slide it down the handle of the axe, okay? All the way to the base, just like that. And then we're going to pull it tight, just like that. Now, this is our, this is the end of our rope. We're going to let that hang. We come over to the other end and we're going to wrap it around the head of the axe. And then we're going to go up. So this is what we're looking at right here. This is your, this is your clove. And now you're going to come up to the handle of the axe and you're going to do a half hitch, which is very similar to the clove, but you're just going to do one loop right here. You slide it down over the handle of the axe. Okay, pull up. So that is what you're looking at right there. And so in total, this is what we're looking at. Now, for a safety measure, we can use our overhand knot just to ensure that this bottom flow pitch will not come undone. And our overhand knot looks something like this. Just very simple. Over the hand and through. And we're just going to tie that to our other line. And that's going to ensure that our, our original clove hitch is not going to come undone. So, with the safety overhand knot, just an insurance knot, tied onto the axe. And then we got our half hitch up on top of the handle. This is what our finished products looks like. We've got our clove hitch right here, wrapped around the head. Our safety knot goes up to the handle with a half hitch, and then boom, you can hoist a tool up or down safely. So that is an important method that we can use with our webbing. Again, it's ideal that we'd use rope. Obviously, we're not going to be able to carry 50 to 100 feet of webbing in our pockets. But for something simple like handing a, an axe or a halligan or whatever we have up one story or down a story 
or down on an embankment or something like that, um, it makes it a little easier and safer. Um, we definitely like to keep safety on the fire ground, that's a big thing. So to review what we've talked about right now, we've talked about our simple water knot, which is what we showed you at the beginning. And we're going to go back through all these knots just one more time to make sure everybody has it. And the water knot, let's remind or remember that that is to connect two ends of a rope. And that is a good method because it is it gets tighter as it gets pulled and it doesn't move. It locks up. And this is a great webbing knot to connect and make a loop for rescue. So again, we're going to take our simple overhand knot like we just demonstrated. And there we have it. Right there. Now we go to the other end. Make sure there's no twists in our line. And we just follow the overhand knot that we just made. That's all you're doing. Let's go over, around, back through. And there you go. That's your water knot. Pull it tight. And then we have our loop. And that's perfect if we're going to drag somebody out. Or, you know, we can secure a hose line. If this is a hose, you know, you right there. It's ready to go. So that's your water knot. And then we showed you how to do the daisy chain, which is right here. This is once you have your water knot and you have your loop. All we do is just go down here. Get our four layers. Just like that. Come back over and we're going to act like we're doing our overhand knot, but really we're not going to follow all the way through. We're just going to shove our webbing through and make a bite. And we're going to repeat that and make the chain keep going through. So if I was going to keep this chain going, I had to shove it right through that loop that we just made and make another loop. Just like that. And we're going to keep going through until we have enough, we have five inches at the end. And then when we get to the end, we're going to follow it all the way through and pull it. That way it won't come undone. And then remember to deploy this. All you got to do is pull the end out. Now you have your chain, your chain breaks free, and you're back to your loop. So it's quick deployment, pretty easy to tie up, and it's great for storage. And if you're going to carry two pieces of webbing, You'll know which one is already tied in a water knot and the other one is already pre-rolled. So, then we covered our clove hitch for hoisting tools. Or actually, we covered our, our handcuff knot right after that. And we'll go ahead and show you how to do that one more time. And that's just we have a straight piece, not a loop. And we literally have one palm up, one palm down, roll the wrist naturally. So we have that kind of pretzel shape. And then we just switch them. So the one on the back gets pulled to the side and goes back. The one on the other side goes forward. And we have this knot right here. And then when we get that, we can stick our victim's hands or feet through these loops, making the handcuff. And then we just pull this tight. And the ends of our rope, we can drag them with that. And then finally, the last knot that we covered was the clove and the half hitch for hoisting our tools. And if you remember, what we do, we just make one loop, make another loop. So now we have two loops. We go to our axe, slide it down the handle to the base of the head of the axe, right here. And then we pull it tight. Okay. And then we take the other end of our rope and go around the head of the axe. And then we go up to the handle. And now we're going to tie our half hitch. Which is where we're just going to make one loop. Just like that. Slide it over the handle. And go up. And remember what we talked about with the overhand safety knot down at the bottom. We're just going to literally go around the line. Overhand safety knot, pull it tight, and that just ensures that our knot's not going to come undone because we don't want an axe falling on the fire ground, hitting somebody in the head. And then follow our half hitch up, 
and that's how we go that's how we hoist the tool so you can see it's a pretty simple knot and at the bottom we have our overhand safety knot right there that's our clove comes around the head and then we can hoist our tool up and down so now that we've covered these knots and we've discussed the different types of webbing and some practical uses for it let's go back over the knots and let's just again touch base of when when we would use this and why our water knot is to connect two ends of webbing together or rope um, these knots can be used on rope and webbing but today we're talking about webbing so we're going to use it in a practical setting here so two ends together water knot it, it locks it's safe um, if you have the time and you make your water knot the end of your line that you have the excess you can make a safety knot overhand knot right there just a double triple check to make sure it's not going to come undone um, next we talked about our daisy chain good storage option and all that serves is the only reason we do our daisy chain it's not an actual knot that we're going to practically use it's a storage option and it just makes it more compact easy to grab easy to deploy and that gives you your loop for rescue and then the third knot we talked about was the handcuff knot handcuff good for victim rescue especially when you don't have access to rope right away you've got your webbing on you already and you got to be quick deploy it quick and just remember is pretzel knot pull it together go around the hands and then you're dragging um, that's a great rescue knot and then we talked about the clove hitch again hoisting tools it can hoist pike poles um, axes halligans anything that's long and has a handle um, there's different knots we could talk about with the with the webbing um, for hoisting but in most cases your webbing is not going to be more than 12 feet long so if you think about it by the time you tie your knot you're not going to be able to hoist a large object more than a story and most times you're not even going to hoist anything a story it's just for it's just there in case you need it um, before we close out this video we're going to talk just a little bit um, about some safety ideas and like inspecting and maintaining our, our webbing. Um, webbing typically is not going to be used in a life safety situation where you're going to tie something and uh, it's going to support life. Um, we have life safety uh, rope which has standards through NFPA 19, um, 1983, excuse me, um, and that basically lists uh, maintenance, um, inspection, how to retire and destroy um, certain ropes and even though there's no standard for webbing because it's not a life, uh, life safety um, rope there is ways that we can use NFPA 1983 to inspect our webbing to make sure that it is good and it is um, safe to use and, and it's not going to break uh, in case we are hoisting something with it and it's heavy and it does break or it has been exposed to certain things and one thing we can look at is we can check our our uh, webbing out and make sure there's no abrasions tears um, debris stuff like that if it's been exposed to high temperatures um, chemicals if it's wet um, these are things that can um, damage or weaken our webbing and typically when we do get webbing there's a package and it has a list of materials um, that we want to keep our webbing away from and it tells you you know not to keep it wet don't get it wet and keep it wet and store it wet because then it'll get moldy uh, get mildew on it and that can weaken it as well so depending on where you get your webbing from read the packaging know what the maintenance and um, inspection um, tips are and so that is something to keep in mind with your webbing uh, again webbing is a great versatile tool and it will always uh, always have a good use. And um, that's it.